Hey everybody, we hope you're doing well out there. This is our first video at London Cycling. We're excited to share this with you. We think it's a way that we can still communicate and hear from you and share what's going on in the cycling world um, with you. And we'll be able to comment and uh, hear from you and get some ideas for future videos. So we're pretty excited about this. Uh, community is one of our core values at London Cycling. We believe that we have to make a great community in the cycling world if we're going to have any progress. So this is our attempt at building community while we are stuck at home. Luis? Yeah, thanks, Dan. And uh, I really want to start with the why here. And uh, I think it's not news to anyone. The bike is the most energy efficient vehicle. You know, it's super cheap, it's healthy, it doesn't pollute. And uh, during crisis, you can really see how the bicycle shines. And it's really a lifeline um, to a lot of people in a lot of cities. And, um, but the bicycle is also important in the um, normal times, right? Because that abundance of normal times, and I think would be naive to believe that we won't have other crises. So that abundance is really seasonal. Um, it could be another virus. It could be natural disasters. It could be a financial crash bubble. And um, also abundance is the way that we know is very short-lived. Um, it's not. It's just not sustainable. Uh, we have the climate change, climate crisis, uh, global warming. We know that fossil fuels are ending, and so many other natural resources that we are depleting. And um, and not only that, that illusion of abundance is not for all, right? So for many people, they don't have that abundance at all. So the all that we see now during a, all those problems that emerge, not just because of the, the the global pandemic, uh, those problems already existed. We're just exposing them. So it's important to to remember that. And uh, just to put, uh, and I don't want to downplay what is happening right now. There's so many people suffering with, with uh, this situation. But just to put things in perspective, traffic kills over 1 million people a year um, around the world. And air pollution causes 4.2 million premature premature deaths a year. Um, so I just want us to keep that sense of urgency when we're uh, thinking about our new normal. And the bike has always been part of the solution. And I think those disruptive times like this global pandemic right now is a wake up call. And it's really an opportunity to question our ha habits and to do things differently. Um, I think we need to seize this opportunity and make um, some better choices. Um, so I, I just want to now, and Daniel, will, um, we're going to introduce ourselves. And uh, so my name is Luis. I am live in London, Ontario, Canada. I have three kids. My background is computer science and urban planning. And I, I don't have a car, I don't own a car since 2004. And I'm the board chair of the London Cycle Link. And I have here with me Daniel. Yeah, and I'm Daniel Hall. I am the executive director of London Cycle Link. Uh, I, the bicycle has occupied a big part of my life for the past 12 years, whether it be commuting to work, uh, carrying my kids, getting groceries. Um, and so I see it in so many ways as a really positive thing in my life. And I want to share that with more people. Um, my background is engineering and urban planning as well. And uh, we want to share one thing we're doing uh, because of physical distance, physical distancing. And I've had the pleasure of getting to spend some time with a friend from New York. He came back to London during the crisis and we go for walks two meters away. Um, getting to talk to him has been great. Yeah, thanks then. Well, one thing that I started doing with all this uh, physical distancing thing is, unfortunately, I riding my bike way less because I don't have to leave my home that often. But I'm going on walks around the neighborhood or even some runs and um just um, I just feel more connected to to my neighbors and my place, even though from a distance. But I'm just spending my time in the neighborhood really feel, uh, makes me feel more connected. Okay, so Daniel, would you like to talk a little bit more about uh, London Cycle Link and who we are? That'd be great. Uh, one of the underlying premises of London Cycle Link is that you shouldn't have to be brave to ride your bike in London. Uh, too often we hear that that people are interested in riding more but they're concerned about their safety. And so London Cycle Link exists to help more Londoners ride more often. We do that through education, 
Uh, we do that through advocacy and we also try and build community. You can find out more about our history at londoncyclelink.ca slash history. Uh, we, have a, we started as an advocacy group and we've kind of built upon that to add the education, building confidence and building community as part of that. And if you're wondering how to ride your bike during this pandemic, we've written a blog article uh, about you know, what the, the do's and do nots are of, of cycling in this time. So please uh, check that link out. We've got all the answers there. And if you have more questions, please comment on it and we'll try and get answers to your questions. Thanks, Dan. And um, so can you share with our members or whoever is watching us, can you share a little bit more about what we are doing right now in response to, to the COVID? So I think like everybody, we're, we're doing our best. We're trying to guess at what the right, right thing to do in response to this is. Um, but our big initiative that's getting a lot of media attention is called Free Rides. And this was the idea of Big Bike Giveaway and we're partnering with them so they have generously given out um, with us over 100 bikes so far. Um, and this is to essential and frontline workers. And it's a way that we can respond when there's so many people who, for whatever reason, uh, they can no longer take maybe the bus because they feel unsafe. Maybe it was a carpool, maybe it's walking and the bike is just that much better. Um, it allows them to still get to work uh, doing jobs that all of us in the community rely on. So that's one of our big initiatives. The second one is we've put all our used bikes for sale online. Uh, we believe that offering affordable transportation is a really key piece of the puzzle for anyone who doesn't have a bike or needs a bike. So they can go to our uh, squeaky wheel page and see our inventory of used bikes for sale. And the third thing is we're kind of still in the infancy stage of, of how we communicate at this time, how we, how we campaign for better bike lanes uh, in this city. And because there's so many more people relying on the bicycle, as Luis introduced that the, the bicycle becomes that much more elevated during a pandemic. Uh, we want to use our safe streets campaign and sort of reimagine it for this time and for the future. And we'll be talking a little bit more about that either in this video or in future videos. Um, Luis. Thanks Dan. Um, and can you share a little bit of uh, with us um, what you see happening um, in other cities throughout Canada? Yeah, absolutely. We'll start in Hamilton and uh, New Hope Community Bikes has been picking up and delivering um, repairs there and uh, Outspoken Cycles in London is doing the same. Uh, they're also doing a mobile repair, so they'll come to your house and repair, repair your bike and uh, London Bicycle Cafe in London is doing that as well. So some exciting things happening here and in Hamilton. Uh, we heard about Brampton putting in, I think, about four kilometers of temporary bike and walk lanes. So they've taken a two lanes of traffic on a four lane road to offer people more space so they can get out and exercise in a safe way. And we're really excited about what's going on there. Brampton is a very car dominated place. Um, some might say similar to London. And so if it can happen there, we can do it here. So we're excited about that. Um, Share the Road is trying to uh, leverage sort of things happening at the pro provincial level, um, campaigning and, and organizing webinars like this to inform people about what's going on and how we collectively as a voice for cycling uh, can make a difference. And then there's a really neat thing nationally to show what is going on in all the different places, um, whether it be taking space, um, our road space that's being unused right now or underused uh, for people walking or biking. And there's a document, um, a Google doc that shows all the different things happening in different cities. And so I think that's a cool resource to, to see what's, what else is happening. Luis, I want you to tell me though about uh, the big picture. Yeah, for sure. And uh, it, it's so exciting to see um, what is happening in Canada, but there's so much happening around the world. Um, and, and I think the bike can, we see those three stages during a crisis, right? It's the response, what we need to do right away. And then we have the recovery and after all the damage is done, how we go back um, just to our normal lives and then rebuild is to really make different choices and you know those more permanent changes that we can see. And, and the bike can really help in all those stages. We can see in the response, like it's um, safe for physical distancing, it's a good alternative to transit. And a lot of people are concerned about taking transit uh, these days. 
it's a way to stay active, which is good for your not only your physical health, but also your mental health, just to be able to be outdoors and do whatever you need to do. Uh, even uh, I'm not talking about um, recreational cycling, but if you need, everybody still needs to go get groceries or, or go to work or anything like this. And that's why we have the free rides initiative um, and, and also save money, right? And, and we'll see that in the recovery stage, we're talking about a recession. So there's, here in Ontario, they say it's over $10,000 that you spend if you own a car on average. So imagine how many people we can lift out of poverty. We can uh, provide another option and people don't have to own cars. And uh, not only for individual, um, um, the individual economy, like personal savings, but also for the government, for the society at large, the, the, the amount of money that we invest on, on road infrastructure can really shift and um, invest in more public transit and, and cycling infrastructure is so much cheaper with so many benefits and we can put the money into rebuilding our economy and supporting our local businesses um, and uh, and of course um, for the the last stage uh, like I said we will face the end of fossil fuels in one way or another so as soon as we start transitioning this the better and I think that the opportunity is hype uh, it's ripe for us to do this, and um, this is not this is not rocket science. This is not crazy talk. We have examples in all over the world, and, and cities in Europe, in South America, in North America, in Asia, and uh, Oceania, Australia, and and so many places doing this. I think it's really an opportunity for us to uh, start shifting now. Um, then. Um, so this is just our intro video. Would you like to share a little bit about uh, our next steps? Yeah, so I think as you mentioned, um, we want to do some themed videos next, uh, talk, talking in deeper discussion about some of these concepts you mentioned, like our physical and mental health that cycling can, can address, our economic health or our you know, affordability, and then our environment. But we also want to hear from you. We want to make sure that you we're covering the, the questions you have or the ideas you have. So if you uh, leave your comments, um, let us know if you have an idea for a future video and, uh, and we'll try to do our best to, to address that. Um, there are a few ways that you can help uh, London Cycle Link in this time. You can like this video, you can share it, uh, you can become a member and you can uh, use our website and the join us page. And uh, volunteering is a little bit different right now when we're, we're mostly stuck at home. Um, but you can always sign up to be a volunteer and when things get back to the normal, we'll love to have you as a volunteer. Um, so th thanks so much for listening, for watching and stay safe and stay active. Thank you. Stay safe and stay active. See you next time.